A conference finals exit for a team that started 2-10, albeit in the sweep, was still an impressive outcome for the trade deadline alter of LeBron and AD fueled Lakers. Recent reports indicate that Los Angeles will be running it back in 2023-24, and sure, the lights got too bright for LA against Joker, Blue Arrow, and the powerhouse Nuggets, who deserve credit for proving themselves, but there's no shame in losing to the number one seed out west. That's especially considering three of the four games LA lost to the Mile High were within six points at the very most. Alas, there are no moral victories in this business, and the Nuggets proved they're damn legit and should have been paid attention to a lot more throughout the regular season and playoffs. But I recently clowned Brian Windhorst for saying that the Lakers had the most impressive performance ever for a team that got swept, and while I do think the Nuggets still have got a shameful lack of credit from the mainstream, as I've made multiple Denver uploads in the aftermath of LA's defeat, trying to make up for the lack of respect for Denver, the Lakers seem like they're a piece or two away from getting back within striking distance and potentially finishing their business come next year. There's no excuses at the end of the day, but you can't forget LeBron was playing on a bad foot which doctors were suggesting should end his season, and his injury came at the worst possible time, being down the stretch of the 22-23 campaign. But there's still various moves to be made for this deadline-molded purple and gold squad entering 23-24, so here's the Lakers' 2023 offseason outline. Right quick, just 14.9% of you watching are subscribed, so please subscribe, slash thumbs up like AD swatting a shot, and for NBA edits like the one on your screen, follow at Hoops on Instagram and Twitter. Thanks for your support. While the sweep at the hands of Denver was gut-wrenching for both LeBron stands and diehard supporters of the purple and gold, Los Angeles defeating the Warriors around prior, cementing turmoil in the Dubs dynasty, made the playoff run worthwhile. But even in the aftermath of both the Rob Palenka midseason upgrades plus all the playoff success LA had, whether it was in the play-in tournament to Minnesota, upsetting the second-seeded Grizz in round one, or taking down Steph Draymond and Golden State in round two, there's still obvious holes that this Lakers roster needs to shore up. A, they've got to find assistant coaches who don't rival Darvin Ham, but better yet help mold him into a better head coach. B, they need more veterans to support the likes of LeBron and Davis, who had a ton of heavy lifting to do in terms of mentorship to the flurry of this team's young talent. C. Palenka should re-sign both Austin Reeves, and as bold as it sounds based off the incredibly rough conference finals showing, D'Angelo Russell as well. D. Acquire Nas Reed in free agency to give AD one of, if not the best backup centers in the NBA. And lastly, E. Go all in by going as deep as possible into the luxury, potentially snagging a guy like Bruce Brown in free agency from the Denver Nuggets. In terms of A, whether it's Mike D'Antoni, Lloyd Pierce, or Steven Silas, the Lakers need a near egoless associate head coach with a ton of experience being the number one director to assist soon-to-be sophomore man in charge, D. Ham. Don't get it twisted, Ham did a very solid job, albeit with all the criticism he received despite getting bossed around by LeBron on the occasion. Darvin, huh? I need you to coach just one time. Please, one game. Out of all the games, just one game I need you to coach. I never did that before. But, I mean, I could try. Maybe y'all should stop flopping? Darvin! I'm just saying, I'm just saying. All right, all right, all right, I'm done. I'm done, LeBron. I'm done. I'm done. I tried. Just coach next game. I got you. One time, come up with a, say it with me, a play. A play. play. Yeah, I got you, I got you, I got you. Speaking of plays, that aspect of Darwin's coaching bag needs to be vastly improved. And I'm not talking about the creativity and specific plays he orchestrates. There were some plays which I broke down film on in separate videos that were pretty advanced. And if given a whole season with the post-trade deadline mans, that could help the Lakers build off their success in 2024. But it's the offensive scheming from Darwin that needs a ton of work. You see teams like the Nuggets, the Heat, Warriors have a specific type of play style or motion they can tell their teams to utilize on a gamely basis to mix things up. Darwin's scheming was evidently one-dimensional and was ultimately sought out by Denver coach Mike Malone. So, Ham needs to polish his playbook and constantly instill said playbook into his players throughout the 23-24 campaign, so he can change up his offensive scheming within the confines of a 7-game series. In terms of B, this goes hand-in-hand -hand with D and E, which were signing Nas Reed and Bruce Brown. 
Reed and Brown would give Ham, Braun, and Brow both talented and experienced utility guys who can both defend and score with versatility. Regarding C, Austin Reeves is a piece you cannot afford to lose. In the conference finals, AR-15 averaged a beastly 21.3 points, 5.3 dimes, and just 1.8 turnovers on a shooting split of 55% from the field, 56% from three, and 100% from the foul line. This was all while dealing with a knee injury he suffered in Game 5 of the quarterfinals when he bumped knees with Triple J, which hampered his movement. The reason I think you should also keep D'Angelo Russell, despite the fact that he averaged just 6.3 points per game in the conference finals, is that you will likely be able to get D'Lo for a bargain based off his poor playoff showing. Also, it's not like the Lakers will be able to find a better point guard on the market than him, and D'Lo is currently ranked by HoopsHype.com as the fourth best available free agent point guard. Throughout the playoffs as a whole, D'Lo's 13.3 points per game, 4.6 dimes, and mere 1.8 TOs was a solid stat line, featuring a more than 2 to 1 assist to turnover ratio. Also, let's not forget about how D'Angelo fueled the Lakers to a midseason turnaround after he was traded in exchange for Russell Westbrook. While he annoyed a lot of Laker fans by practicing his shots after the playoff games, it shows D'Lo's character to want to be better despite his struggles that he came out to shoot around even after the Lakers were swept. As he continues to learn the offense and mature within the system under LeBron and AD, I expect Russell to be a lot better for the Lakers in 2024's postseason. If all of these steps are executed by Jeannie Buss, Rob Palenka, and the entirety of the Lakers' front office, then in potentially the final year of Braun's career, LA would have a real shot at sending James into the twilight by getting the King enough support to make another deep playoff run and potentially winning chip number 18. While it'll take going deep into the pockets of the Buss family, the payoff may ultimately be worth it in what could be one of the most marketable seasons of all time from a team in 23-24. But do you agree with me about the Lakers' 2023 offseason outline? Let me know down below in the comments.